Hey guys, it's Jansen of Peregrine and in today's episode of Rig Rundown, I will be showing you a rundown of my rig. Yeah, let's start. Well, let's start with guitars and these are the guitars that we use for live and for recording. So let's first start with the guitars that Jaime mentioned in the previous episode because these guitars are his. I'm just borrowing them. Well, we have this. It is the Fender Telecaster. And to be honest, uh, since this is the most high-end quality guitar that we are able to, you know, have access that has the most, uh, the best, uh, maybe not the best, but the most reliable hardware, then I'm pretty sure that this is going to be used on most of the record, upcoming record. And also, um, if you want to know more about the specs of this guitar, I'm pretty sure that Jaime already mentioned this in the last episode, so go back there. But if not, then just stay right here. So let's go with the next one. So for the next guitar, this is the... I think it was Live Germany. Now this was the guitar that Jaime used when we were in our high school. And this was one of his, I think his first electric guitar. And this was originally originally black, but he wanted to remove the paint, so I removed it for him. And uh, I don't think this is gonna be a part of the record, but since he mentioned this last in the last video, then I think I should mention this here too. Now, what I like about this guitar is that um, uh, it has no strings, and that's why I don't have to play with it. So let's move on with the next one. So for the next guitar, it's a bass guitar, and um, this was mine, and this is the Sound Rock. Now, if you want to know about the specs of this guitar, you shouldn't. This is a cheap guitar, and uh, you know uh, it doesn't really sound that great. It doesn't really feel great. Its head is heavier than the body. I mean, what's up with that? Uh, but if you really want to know, I think the wood of this guitar is. I don't know man maybe a potato but actually beside this guitar being dirt cheap uh, I this was the one that we used actually or I used for recording coffee in the evening and um, what's that uh, coming home to you now the reason why I got the five strings bass is because I really wanted to use the, uh, the low end of it so yeah so for our next guitar this was actually my first electric guitar that was given to me by my uncle this was the genesis series i don't think they still make these guitars but um it used to be red but a fun fun fact about this guitar is this was the guitar that i may used for writing the or recording the original track for the uh, the lead solo on coming home to you and the reason for that being is because the fretboard feels really nice when you are shredding here uh, sweet picking. This is what I love most about this guitar because it is it feels great for shredding and sweet picking and all. So um, I'm not really sure if uh, this will be a part of the next record, but I really want to fix this so that I can play with this live. So for our next guitar, uh, this this is actually my 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 baby. Uh, this was uh, this was given to me by my dad, and this was my most prized possession guitar. So this is the Michael Kelly Patriot Premium Marvel at its glory. <laughs> but anyway, um, now what's great about this guitar is because it's uh, a guitar that I never actually come across with that has the same features because uh, one, this guitar is one body. What I mean by one body is that its neck and its body is connected meaning they were applied with only one wood i think because you can't unscrew this so if you observe the previous guitar notice here you can unscrew the neck from the body whereas here you can't do that notice so that means that if this breaks uh, you won't be able to replace any part from this so i really try to take care of this now I will tell you the specs about this one though because this is something that I like to brag about or maybe not but you know I guess if you're a guitar connoisseur like Jaime you would care. So basically I don't think this has a top but it's wood is basically mahogany and it's really heavy though. It's like a it's like bass heavy. 
and then um, the pickups here is a, a rock field but I placed these pickup covers so that it will look like an EMG but they're not and then a three-way switch but you don't care about that and then um, oh yeah the fretboard ebony fretboard pretty sure that's obvious so yeah Michael Kelly this is my most favorite guitar and um, I used it to record half-hearted and uh, we tend to use this guitar when the parts are played in a non-twangy way when we want our writing here to be more clean because this has a well-rounded sound and very less uh, self noise ground noise so yeah then lastly for our main acoustic uh, guitar and to be honest I really can't pronounce the the brand of this guitar maybe Aspire oh wait Aspire <laughs> it's Aspire <laughs> it has a rich sound so now that we were able to talk about the guitars let's head over to the pedals that I use so for pedals we use a very wide range of pedals extensible pedals here are mine so I have here the Nux Overdrive the Nux MG 100 the multi FX pedal and the Moore Shimverb. That's pretty much it. Extensible, huh? So, anyway, now if you're a guitar connoisseur, I'm pretty sure you'd be going like, But Johnson, don't you think it's better if you have analog pedals that many so that you can be flexible with your tone? If you have a multi effects pedal, big brain. But if you have many analog pedals, small pee pee, small brain. Well, that is true, but the fact here is that I'm poor. That's why we'll go with the uh, multi effects pedal. It's pretty cheap actually. So let's first over with this one, the Knox Overdrive um, pedal. And this was my first pedal that I bought on online shopping, and uh, this cost about 1,000 pesos. So basically, it's dirt cheap, and this also amplifies the fact that I'm poor but despite it being cheap I think the tone is really great uh, it has a very subtle drive but at the same time it can go to a crunchy one and you can actually get away with this pedal for for only 1000 pesos so I really do recommend this one if you want a cheap overdrive but has a great tone so next is for the uh, Knox MG100 now this was actually I, got, I, I really wanted to buy this when I first saw it uh, when my cousin had this one and the reason for that is because this pedal has an arrangement of your FX chains so its arrangement goes from first of all being the compression and then second going to the uh, pre effects so these are the effects that you want before the amp and then th this has the amp sim also an amp cabinet and then after that there's this EQ and then after the EQ we have the noise gate and then um, the delay no wait not the delay and then the post effects the delay and then the reverb this was around maybe 4,500 pesos and for that price you know you already have a wide variety of effects that you can use you know during live and the effects aren't really that bad you know so yeah I think this is a very good uh, pedal and it also has many features that you can go ahead and look for yourselves but I won't go into full details with this so this is my most favorite pedal that I have right now this is the Moore Shimverb and this was actually my first pedal and remember when you saw Jaime having his uh, Moore Shimverb yeah he got it because he was so jealous of mine that he actually bought for himself a little bit about this pedal is that it has uh, three options that you can use the type of reverb that you want we have the room the spring and the shimmer so my favorite actually here would be spring especially if I will use a Stratocaster I like to play with it uh, with the spring option on you can go ahead and search for demos of this one because I'm not going to be demoing this because this is not a demo this is just a rig rundown so yeah, that was the whole rig rundown of mine. That was the rig that I use for live and for recording. And uh, if you want to know more, you can always just beat me up, but don't be annoying. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you guys are safe. Um, I'm pretty sure you already know that we are in this pandemic and we have to try to flatten the curve. 
So let's try to stay at home, okay? Goodbye.